Welcome back. All right, so this video, we are going to continue building onto our triangle reference guide where we looked at our orthocenter created by our altitudes and our centroids created by our medians. This time we're going to use angle bisectors to find, see if they all intersect at the same spot. Okay, so for my angle bisectors, I am going to need to use a protractor and I'm going to have to measure each angle so that I can divide it in half. So I'm going to line my protractor up here and measure it and it looks like this is 75 degrees, this angle. So I'm going to take 75 and divide it in half and I get 37.5. So when I measure this angle, 37.5, 10, 20, 30, this is 35. So 36, 37.5 is right about there. And so my angle bisector, and since it's different from your altitude is a length, like it's the top to the opposite side, it's a corner to the opposite side at a 90 degree angle. Your median is a length, it's from a corner to a midpoint. This one doesn't have to be a length, it just has to divide the angle into two equal pieces. So this one you can actually draw it as a ray, it can go on forever and ever and ever because we don't measure the angle bisector. We just say it divides this angle into two equal pieces. Okay, then let's go ahead and measure the next angle. So when I measure the next angle and I look out here where it comes, it's between the 60 and the 70. It looks like it's right there at 65 between the 60 and the 70. So 65 divided in half is 32.5. So when I measure 10, 20, 30, 2.5, it's going to be right about there. Okay, so now I can sketch in this angle bisector. Now since this is a different because it was 70, half of 75 and then half of 65, these are two different angles so I'm going to put two different markings on them so I can tell that these two angles are different from these two angles. Sometimes you'll see people also like they do segments, they'll put tick marks on the arcs as well. And one more angle to do, I'm going to do this angle over here. Now this one, this time I'm using the numbers on the outside because look at where my zero is. My zero, I've got my 180 on the inside set of numbers and it's counting backwards. We want to count up as the angle opens. So this angle is line it up. This angle is about 40 degrees, so that means half of that, that's easy, that's 20 degrees. And then we'll see how well I measured, because we'll see how well the three lines, or three rays, line up. Pretty good. Okay, and I can see they do intersect nicely right here at this point. If you were sketching your own, if you printed this out and you're sketching your own and they don't line up quite as nicely because you don't have a protractor so you're kind of eyeballing it, then you just make a nice big dot and nobody can tell the difference. Or just do the first two and then use that intersection as your goal mark. Again, this was only 20 degrees so it was different from the other two. So it gets its own unique angle marks. Okay. All right, for my right angle or my right triangle, we're going to do the same process. I'm going to start, I'll start with this left angle. Again, notice my zero is on this set, of, is right here. So I'm going to use those numbers when I measure. So when I measure out that angle, it goes to, um, that's about 28 degrees. And half of 28 is 14. So it's going to go to 14 degrees. It's going to be half. So that's 10, that's 15, so one in front of that is 14. And then we line up and sketch our ray. I already know this angle is 90, that's my right angle, so that one, when I divide it in half, I'm going to be going to 45. And I can see it goes right up through the 90. And then my 45, I don't want this 45 over here, that's not even in the triangle, right? We opened up from the zero right here. So 45 is going to be right here between the third 60, the 50 and the 40. 
So when I come out, it's going to be this line right here. And when I line up and draw my ray, there's my angle bisector. I didn't mark that. That was 14 degrees. This one is 45 degrees. And so then my last one, let's measure this last one. This angle is... Now, this one doesn't go as far out as I'd like it to go, so I'm actually going to rotate around because this side's so much longer, it's going to extend further on my protractor. So I'm going to line up with the other side so that I can see how far out this comes. So let's see, this angle is coming out right between the 60 and the 70. I'm going to say that's 61, 62, 63 degrees. So half of 63 degrees is 31.5. So 10, 20, 30. 1.5 is going to be like right there. We'll see how well I did right now. So when I line up with the corner and then that dot that I made, a little bit off. There's a little gap there, but that's okay. We're going to fix it because we're going to make a nice big dot for our intersection. So it looks like they nicely intersected. And then again, these were both the same angle, but different from the others in the picture. Last one, we have my obtuse triangle. So we're going to measure these, starting with, I'm going to start over here on the left. When I measure this angle, I can see that it's a little bit more than 20. Because again, remember, we start at the zero and open up. So it's a little bigger than 20, but how much bigger? Looks like 22, 21, 22. So I'm going to go to 11. So 10, 11, right there. Okay. So there's my first angle. It's 11 degrees. I'm going to assume it's going to be different from the other ones. And let's go ahead and measure this one next. And again, we would open up from our zero and open all the way up out to this line, which looks like it goes to just in front of the 110. But if we're not sure because it doesn't go all the way out to the edge where the little hash marks are, we can always rotate our triangle because this side's going to be longer, so it is going to extend out. And so now if I have that side going to zero, I look at these inside numbers from the zero, and I can see, yes, it does look, it opens up right to 110 when I line it up this way. So half of 110 is going to be 55. So from the zero, I want to open up to 55, which is going to be between the 50 and the 60. So it's going to be right here. And last but not least, that third angle, when I line up right here. All right, so this one, when we line this one up, it's right about 50. It might be a little bit bigger than a little, let's see. It's right close to 50. It might be a little over 50, like 50.5. Okay, so then half of 50.5 is 50, oops, I didn't divide by 2, is 25.25, but this is so small, 0.25 out of an angle, really we can just put it at 25, and we might just end up having to make our dot a little bit bigger, because they might not intersect perfect, but pretty close. So then this angle is different from these angles. And my center is right here. Okay, so I can see no matter what type of triangle I have, whether it was acute, whether it was right, or whether it was obtuse, my triangles, or my center, my intersection of my angle bisectors was always inside the triangle. Okay, now, we do have a name for that one. We call it the in-center. OK? 
Okay? We call that the in-center. And the reason we call that the in-center of the triangle is because it is the center of a circle that is what we call inscribed inside a circle. So when I look down here, notice I have my angles bisected and I have them coming out and then I stopped them at the at the intersection. I didn't keep them going like I did on the others. Notice how the circle that I used this compass, the circle will hit each side exactly. Okay? As I go around, the circle is the same distance from each side. So the circle, we say that's inscribed inside the triangle. So we call it the in-center because it's the center of the circle that's inside the triangle. Okay? In the next video, we're going to look at some examples of using the in-center, of identifying and using the in-center. Thank you for watching.